Hi everybody and welcome to my third vlog. This vlog will focus and concentrate on my coaching process and will feature a competitive badminton player. This badminton player does have limited strength and conditioning experience but is an incredibly quick learner and is very eager to improve. Each of our training sessions with this client has been repeated by the individual during the week which will speed up the learning process. The main aim of this vlog is to analyse behavioural traits from myself as the coach and to highlight important areas in which I could have improved during the session I've had with the client. This coaching session will consist of the art of core activation on a neuromuscular level. I believe this is the most effective way to train and teach core exercises and core activation for an athlete in order to help them learn on a neuromuscular level how to activate them during a competitive sporting environment. I will be highlighting as the session goes on ways or, and areas in which I could have improved in the teaching of this. Before the coaching session, it is very important to understand how the athlete learns and processes information. This badminton player is mainly a visual learner, but is also able to learn through her own practice of the exercise. I wanted to highlight this paragraph by Dr. David Gabriel, who discusses the importance of the brain during strength training and learning of exercises, as it is very relevant and related to my session with the client. Right, okay, so what we're going to learn here is how to activate our core muscles properly for when we play badminton. So in other words, what we're going to do is keep our lower back flat to the floor, and I want you to bear in mind or think about trying to push against the ground, resist it entirely, so you're trying to push the ground away. So literally just coccyx off the floor uh, by about an inch. Lower back is always, always in contact with the ground by the coccyx area. Arms down by your side here, okay? And in the art of doing that and lifting your lower back off the ground, you'll naturally engage your core muscles, okay? So in other words, when you're in this position and you feel nice and stable and you feel like this is, in, um, is on, I'm going to get you to lift up either leg whilst simultaneously trying to keep your pelvis stable. In the art of doing that whilst lifting the leg, it's actually going to use your hip flexors and obviously to lift the leg, but then it's going to actually in, uh, use your core muscles to stabilise your hip area, if that makes sense. And you'll start to build uh, fundamental uh, core strengthening um, strength, if that makes sense. So just simply again, lower back on the floor, but cocks it off, leg up and down for 10 repetitions. So one, two, three, four, five, six, up to 10. Once you've done that, and then you're going to move on to something a little bit harder, we're going to involve a weight. The weight is going to be above your head, around here, legs just um, on the floor as they are there, and then really, really controlled, slightly bent arms, lifting up the weight to about mid height here, and then back down. All of this is going to actually be experiencing your core muscles here. Okay, so in other words, it looks like you're actually uh, using the arms to lift the weight, but actually your core muscles will start to actively take over and work. Okay, so you should be feeling it down here and then the core there. If not, then we'll, um, I'll be able to help you experience that um, appropriately in the right way. Okay, so simply again, up and down, but we'll come on to that in a minute. One of the key behavioural errors I've picked up on is the over-explanation of the exercise. This may confuse the athlete as there's too much information to process and implement. The improvement is to be more clear with sharp and direct information to process. Try and put your uh, lower back against the ground as hard as you possibly can. So you try and push down as hard as you possibly can. Okay? Cocks it slightly off the ground, so which is your lower back. And then all I want you to do is not too much, just a little bit less but just make sure that lower back is off the ground. So I should be able to poke you here in your pelvis and it should be quite tight. It does feel quite on, which is good. It feels activated. So then I want you just to be very, very carefully lift up either leg first, but maintaining your hips becoming stable, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. So just very, very steadily off you go. Yep, slowly keep it nice and steady and slow and controlled. Off you go. But just bear in mind, keep that lower back nice and flat push it down as much as you possibly can so you're trying to like you're, you're, you're trying to resist it as much as possible the temptation to be um, unsteady okay so just concentrate in your own head for 10 repetitions so this is actually helping you train on a neuromuscular level how to activate your core muscles appropriately so that when you do um, activities in real uh, life and when you play badminton we'll actually be able to naturally engage this uh, through the practice and repetition of this exercise Okay, 
So in order to advance this exercise a bit more, we're going to involve the weight, which we'll get in a minute. Okay. So once you practice this for a number of weeks, um, to actually get this down to a T, and you can actively um, feel it being tight here and sore, not sore, but tight, and you're engaging your lower back down into the floor, you'll then be able to move on to the next exercise. Sitting on a stool is not the best way to explain this exercise to the clients, and it would be far more appropriate for me to be kneeling beside them and conveying the information at a more personal, intimate level in order for them to understand it at its absolute maximum. This is going to be a substantial way to actually start you off, but I want you just to literally just keep that lower back nicely flat to the uh, ground as we practiced before, okay? Yeah. And I want you just to really carefully and control and use your legs to keep that lower back flat. That's, that's, that's the most important thing. If it starts to, on the downward process, if it, if it starts to, um, your, your lower back, uh, that is, starts to lift up, that's going to be very, very bad for the back and, and it could uh, result in injury. So what we want to try and do is keep it flat, I know I said it, but let's just keep on top of that. Reviewing and revising my cueing technique would be quite beneficial in this segment as I wasn't as clear as I could have been on the appropriate ways to perform the exercise at its absolute best. So uh, lift up the weight, nice and steady. So for 10 repetitions, just nice and slow. Arms slightly straighter if you possibly can, but just resist all of this. So when I'm touching in here now, in around the core aspects of this person, you, I can actually notice with my fingers the active elevation of the muscles and, and they're working to, in order to lift this weight. Now, with, you know, in all honesty, you should be able to feel a, a, a sort of a activation of muscle yeah. down there and on your sides here. There should be a little bit of pressure in terms of work on your arms, but it's, yeah. not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the primary thing. So just keep it going this way a few more. I know it's difficult, but always, always, always resist that lower back. Make sure it's nice and steady and controlled. Legs are going to be keeping you nice and stable as well. One of the important aspects of coaching is to relate the exercise back to the athlete's chosen sport. This is of paramount importance as it allows the athletes to engage with the exercise on a far more effective level in, in order to the, get the best out of it and to understand the importance of why they're performing the exercise and ways in which they can implement it into their sport, which is what I sh should have done here. Arguably, I believe this is the most uh, safe way to train and work core strength because this is not going to be detrimenting the lower back when doing a plank. Um, if not done properly, your lower back can arch uh, downwards because of the uh, uh, centre of gravity and that is actually going to really hurt the lumbar spine and cause potentially injuries in the future with the athlete. So it's quite important to do it on the floor, back flat, um, and to keep it nice and simple, okay, so that's really, really, really good. In order to support the statements I have just made, I should have provided proven studies and references to the athletes in order for them to gain confidence and trust in my ability to coach the exercise to them. This will then allow them to perform it at a greater level and will help the process along further. Just leave, leave the weight where it is, and then one more time, I just want you just to keep that nice back flat again, same thing again, but lifting up either, 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 sorry, either leg for six repetitions if you possibly can, okay? Just nice and simple. And then over time in practice, this, as I said, at the beginning will become a lot more stable, even though it's not perfect now. In time, it will become in, in, uh, really, really well done and controlled. And then in real life, when you do, even not just badminton, but day to day life, in your daily life, you should be able to notice a lot more stability within the core um, in order to control it better um, on a neuromuscular level, which is creating positive habits within the musculature. After having gone through this with the athlete, we repeated it another two times and went over the same key areas in order to help the athletes become more familiar and accustomed to the exercise at hand. The diagram displayed is vital for coaches to effectively plan sessions and review them accordingly for the athletes. This allows for greater efficiency, which will provide positive results. In conclusion, throughout this coaching session, I have used a number of coaching methods. Verbal cues and demonstrations have been key throughout. From a behavioral point of view, I need to improve upon simplifying the instructions to the participants. Know when to ask open and closed questions to, and to ensure my 
multi-position is engaged throughout the task. I have received very positive feedback from this client and she was very happy with the session.